Okay, those are my uh, uh, disclosures. I will uh, actually mention something about 3D biopsy in the talk, and I'll point that out as we go forward. You know, ultrasound guidance uh, was uh, started in the mid-1960s. Uh, um, we really learned a lot uh, from um, John McNeil, a pathologist who described the distinct uh, zones of the prostate and Watanabe who uh, could visualize them. There was some hope that um, the ultrasound would identify prostate cancer as a hypoechoic lesion, but we quickly learned that wasn't the case. What has changed uh, since um, the introduction of ultrasound uh, is not much. You know, in our uh, PSA screening program, we started out with a quadrant biopsy, uh, which uh, uh, we thought was the state of the art in 1989. The report came out about a sextant biopsy uh, after we started it, so we revised that with the IRB. And over time, I put it to you that that's about the only thing that we've done with conventional transrectal ultrasonography is we've increased the number of cores. And even today, this biopsy remains significantly operator dependent. No matter whether you call it a systematic biopsy, it's random. The cores, some are close together, some are far apart. Everybody knows that we miss significant pathology requiring rebiopsy. And even if we hit the cancer, we don't know anything about the location of the cancer, and it often overestimates or underestimates the, uh, the uh, cancer. Uh, we don't even know what the ideal number of cores are. Uh, there were efforts at this um, about 10 or 15 years ago, a Vienna nomogram that adjusted uh, the number of cores for the size of the prostate and the age of the patient. The implicit uh, belief is that you don't need as many cores in an older guy because you only want to find the larger cancers. I'm not sure that's necessarily true. You can do mathematical modeling uh, that uh, says, uh, boy, if you have a 50-gram uh, prostate and you could perfectly array them, you, you would have, uh, with 14 cores, a 90% chance of detecting a 1cc cancer. But there's just really no way that that happens. Uh, we've learned a lot now that transrectal ultrasound in the office uh, really doesn't, uh, isn't as safe and uh, good uh, as we thought it was. Everybody is aware, I'm sure, of the uh, infections, uh, fluoroquinolone resistance uh, uh, in an effort to diminish these infections. Some people use a rectal swab. I myself formal and decontaminate the needle in between each biopsy because that way I feel I'm not reintroducing uh, feces back into the prostate. So although we call it a, a, a conventional or a systematic biopsy of the prostate, others in the field, me included, prefer to call this a random transfecal hand job biopsy. <laughs> and it, it really isn't, uh, you know, as, as glorious as we would like it to be. Now, over the years, everybody sort of recognized that, and, and there were some early efforts uh, a number of years ago to do transperineal grid biopsies in an effort to find uh, the cancer, and, and we did. It, even in uh, heavily pre-biopsied populations, you can see up to 10 previous sessions of, uh, you know, transfecal random biopsies, you could still find a significant amount of cancer in, uh, in those uh, prostates. And uh, Brian Moran, who's actually a radiation therapist outside of Chicago, uh, really has written quite extensively on this. Uh, to maximize his detection, you would have to take one core per 1.2 cc's of prostate. So you can see that that would result in a lot of biopsies. But it does give you a lot of information. Uh, it tells you pretty good, with pretty good um, satisfaction, what the real Gleason score is and which octant of the prostate that uh, cancer is uh, located in. And this, this is my disclosure. Now, the, the only thing that's changing in, in the transperineal biopsy using this grid technique is uh, Neil Stone and others uh, are developing an adjustable needle where the biopsy length can be adjusted from one centimeter all the way to six centimeters. The needle uh, itself is very rigid. And the bevel is shaped in a very specific way so that there's minimal, if any, arcing as you pass that needle through. And finally, uh, developing a uh, way of unloading that core so that the pathologist can see exactly which is the distal end and which is the proximal end. And if you truly array these every five millimeters or so on your grid, you can then make a nice uh, computer 3D map of where that uh, cancer is uh, within the prostate. Now, that's not yet available. For now, when I do a transperineal biopsy, 
I'm using um, uh, Matt uh, Alloway's uh, precision point system. It basically, uh, this uh, introducing needle is placed on the left side of the perineum, and from that one axis, you, can, you could take your biopsies of the entire left side of the prostate, then you reintroduce that needle into the right side of the perineum, and you could take your biopsies on uh, the right side of the prostate. And this is, uh, you'll find a lot of cancers. Uh, we've been doing it now for about a year, year and a half. If the MRI status of the patient is not known, 60% of the time we find cancer, a third of the time it's significant. If the MRI is not suspicious, 46% cancer, 12% clinically suspicious. And if the MRI is suspicious, we find cancer 100% of the time, and, and it's uh, clinically significant the majority of the time. So I actually think that's a very nice uh, technique that you can do under, um, under local. Now, what's uh, uh, changing in ultrasound now is uh, what's called micro uh, ultrasound, the, the exact uh, uh, imaging system. Uh, this has been studied a little bit in uh, Europe, and you can see uh, image-guided biopsy with uh, MRI and um, this uh, technique uh, resulted in about the same number of uh, cancer discoveries. This is a forest plot of a few different uh, five independent uh, sites. Some of the pictures you see with this are absolutely amazing, and uh, it takes a little practice to identify the difference between chronic inflammation and cancer. But this is what blew my mind. This is a guy on active surveillance having a repeat ultrasound uh, six months later, you can see with details where the previous cores came from. I think that's pretty astonishing. Now, until that uh, becomes more widely available, uh, we're still left with MRI and, as I'll get to, PET scanning. I'm sure everybody's familiar with uh, MRI, the three main parameters, the T2-weighted imaging, diffusion-weighted imaging, and dynamic contrast enhancement. Uh, T2 lesions are uh, darker uh, for the most part, and this is just an index patient showing this large T2 abnormality in the anterior part of the prostate. Diffusion weighted imaging, just ask the question, how rapidly are the water molecules diffusing in that part of the prostate? If there's a high-grade cancer, the cells are densely packed and water uh, diffuses very, very slowly. So, so the diffusion weighted uh, reference can give you some uh, estimate of whether it's a high grade or a low grade cancer. And then of course there's dynamic contrast enhancement. So you can see that if you put uh, all three of these parameters together, hypo intensity to uh, bright after you give the gadolinium and uh, uh, slow uh, diffusion, you could uh, estimate and predict that that guy has a high chance for a high grade aggressive cancer, in this case Gleason 9. And because it was anterior, the conventional biopsies are completely negative. And we've been studying this for a number of years, as have uh, many other people. Uh, you could do your um, uh, targeted biopsies uh, cognitively. That works. We've showed that. The group at NYU has shown the same thing. Uh, the best study, the largest study, I should say, on uh, the value for MRI-targeted biopsy came from Peter Pinto and the group uh, at NIH. And basically, MRI-targeted biopsies resulted in discovery of more clinically significant cancers. But it wasn't perfect, because it would have missed these eight cancers. So it found 40 extra ones, but it missed uh, eight. Um, we've been uh, trying to integrate uh, MR findings into the nomograms that we use to predict whether a patient should have a biopsy. And our website uh, just went live about uh, uh, a month or so ago. Uh, we took the PCPT calculator and we added in um, the uh, prostate uh, volume and the MRI finding. Like I mentioned the other day, MRI estimated PSA density is a really powerful component of this model. So even if your MRI is normal, it gives you some information as to how much cancer is there. So you could just click on that and uh, try to determine whether you uh, want to go ahead with a biopsy. There's a number of randomized trials of MRI. This is the uh, first one showing that uh, if you did an MRI, there's less overdiagnosis of cancer and a higher discovery rate of clinically significant cancer. Second trial published in the New England Journal of Medicine showed uh, essentially the same uh, things, uh, lower rates of clinically insignificant cancer, 
uh, fewer men undergoing biopsy and, and enhanced detection of clinically significant cancer. And this, uh, in that study, and this is re representative of most places, shows the probability of clinically significant cancer if your lesion is a pyrads 5, 4, and uh, 3. More recently, there's a couple of other uh, randomized trials that have come out on MRI. This one from France, and I'll just highlight uh, MRI targeted biopsy. Uh, you should do that, but it does not seem to avoid the need for systematic biopsy. I agree with that completely. Here is a uh, study uh, uh, looking at uh, three different ways, uh, cognitive, fusion, and in-bore MRI biopsy, basically no significant difference in the detection rate of cancer among those three techniques. Uh, another uh, uh, study uh, uh, looking at MRI, uh, in addition to doing fusion, you should also do visual estimates, meaning a cognitive biopsy, to enhance your discovery. Because remember, the, the, the fusion software and the co-registration isn't perfect. There's a lot of uh, guesswork in science uh, and art to doing a good fusion biopsy. And this is uh, the last uh, study I'll uh, highlight. This is from Yelly Behrens, and uh, he's a very strong proponent of uh, MRI-only biopsies. But I would say that, uh, so in his MRI low-risk uh, patients, he did not biopsy half the patients, 309 out of 626, and he would have missed about 3% of the clinically significant cancers. On the other side, uh, if he did only MRI-targeted biopsy, he found 160 uh, cases of cancer. But if you did that in conjunction with a systematic biopsy, he found a, 180 additional cancers. So to me, this says if you're going to do a targeted biopsy, you've got to hit the target as best you can, but you also have to do systematic biopsies. These are data from Stanford showing that even at Stanford, where there's nine radiologists uh, who read MRIs, significant variations in how they assign a given MRI into uh, PIRADS 5, 4, 3, et cetera. And, and uh, the belief is that in the community, it's even worse because Stanford has perfect equipment, a lot of training, and a lot of people. And that's one of the real limitations of MRI. Uh, there's uh, still some unresolved issues. Uh, is it for biopsy-naive patients or only repeat biopsies? I do it on the biopsy-naive guys if I can get it. Um, we've got our uh, clinical nomograms. Should you add in uh, information from other markers, uh, which I know Priya is going to talk to uh, talk to us later. Uh, we're going to be finding a lot of prostate cancer with PET MRI and PET uh, CT. Uh, there was an uh, eye-opening uh, abstract presented at the AUA last year, not yet been published, but 45 patients with up to one to three prior negative hand job biopsies still with, and a negative MRI. Half of them had a suspicious PSMA uh, PET uh, scan in the prostate, and you can see how much clinically significant and other cancer they discovered. This was a uh, nice uh, review article in uh, radiology showing that uh, gallium PSMA PET MRI versus MRI statistically significant sensitivity and specificity for uh, that modality. And like I said, the MRI itself can predict whether the uh, cancer you discover has a high or a low Gleason score, but these uh, SUVs from the PET uh, MRIs are even better predictors of, of uh, high-grade versus non-high-grade disease. This was one of the uh, studies that really hit home to me. Uh, in, in a group of uh, uh, 31 patients who had radical prostatectomy, as you can see, all the cancers were discovered by histology, of course. PSMA PET found all but three of them. MRI only missed these 15. So PET MRI, I think, is coming on. It's much more sensitive than, uh, than uh, MRI alone. We've got a lot of uh, stuff going on at Wash U. Uh, the Prostate Cancer Foundation has funded um, a number of studies that, uh, that we're doing. And, and you can find terrific uh, pictures of, uh, uh, you know, Gleason. Here's a Gleason 9 focus uh, within the prostate. You can see looking at these different sort of uh, mathematical permutations, you can really, really see the cancer. So I think the future is very bright, that we will have much better imaging biopsy than just a conventional MRI. 
whether it's going to be this high-frequency ultrasound or a combination of PET and uh, MRI, I think, uh, remains to be seen. So uh, thank you uh, very, very much. Um, appreciate that.